Hello, brothers and sisters, and welcome back to another exciting episode of The Sit Down with Mike Racine. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, my goddamn Zoom recorder broke this week. And also, I'm addicted to anime porn. I can't stop watching it. I love those giggly Japanese cartoons with their large breasts and their (laughs) big eyes. It's very hard to draw Asian people, but uh, I think they, they, the way their interpretation of it is very good. I cannot stop touching myself to that luscious, beautiful Asian cartoon pornography. How we doing, everybody? Thanks for being here. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for listening. The show's late. Uh, like I said, my Zoom recorder, the goddamn thing is about a month old. And it broke, but now I'm back. I'm back with a little solo cast. A little solo cast. If you're a if you're a Patreon member of our show, I do some solo casts every once in a while. You know, just me, ranting, Unabomber style, in my office. That I share with my fiance. Um. Anyway. Today's episode is a little bit thrown together, but I think you guys are really going to like it because, um, well, well, what's in the news, folks? Uh, the orange bad man is gone. See you later. See you later, Donald Dump. Am I right, folks? Huh? Yeah. Sayonara. More like, uh, more like dumpster fire, dumpster fire Trump. How about Conald? Because he's a con artist. Right, everybody? Now... I know that uh, a lot of our listeners are, um, they're too cool to engage in this kind of stuff, you know, they don't care, and uh, we do have, you know, I don't, I don't know if I, if I care about this stuff that much either, but um, I don't think that you can completely write it off, um, because I think it's a, I think it's a big deal, you know, I don't think that you can just you can just completely disengage from something this this big but you know i was on uh i was on twitter a couple of days ago and i was looking at just some of the stuff that people were saying and there was some guy who i don't know who he was but he was he was being quote tweeted he had a blue check mark and somebody and he said he had some thing where he was like you know, Andrew Johnson got impeached for firing a staff member. Bill Clinton got impeached for lying about a blowjob. But this, this is like, this is really big. And somebody, now first of all, Bill Clinton did get impeached for lying about a blowjob. But didn't it happen like in the Oval Office? Because that's kind of funny to think that the, who, like whoever's after Clinton, you know, just has to go to work every day in a room where some pedophile got sucked off, where some pedophile manipulated an intern into blowing him, you know? I'm just going to go out on a limb here, folks. I don't think that was a, that was a, uh, a, a, uh, <laughs> a mutual decision that both of those consenting adults made, you know what I mean? One of the most powerful people and, and, uh, and an intern, a White House, a 21-year-old, Thick as hell, <laughs> beautiful, v- voluptuous. I don't think the word BBW was was around during Monica Lewinsky's time, but um, I wish we had it, you know, because I remember being a ten year old and being like, you know, kind of know what's going on, not really. It's like that that happened when I was about ten years old. So so you, I, I was in fifth grade, I think, right? So you, it's like. You have an idea what's going on, but you but you don't. But you're but, but you know more than you um, you know you know more than your parents think that you do. And I just remember thinking, there needs to be a word. I wish there was three letters to describe that lady. I wish, <laughs> I, wish <laughs> I wish we had some kind of abbreviation to to point on. I'm gonna. You know what? I mean, Deb's in the other room right now. I don't think she can hear me, but I am gonna just. I'm not going to do it on this tab because that's an article I need to read. But I am going to just very quickly Google image search Monica Lewinsky. Because I remember her. 
I think I remember. I, I remember as a kid thinking she was pretty, and I haven't really revisited. She's also she's on Twitter, um, and uh, she's very funny, and she seems like a good. She seems like a like a positive role model, you know. And also, she's she's a huge. Uh, I think she was a huge victim in everything that happened because, I, as as I understand, the Clintons smeared her a lot. I had so much prepared about Andrew Jack a- Andrew Johnson, and I th- and I wonder if we're just gonna. <laughs> I'm just gonna talk about Monica. I mean, she looks great. This is a recent photo. Hold on a second. Okay. Yeah, she looks great. She's funny. She's a strong. She's a great presence. She's a good role model. I would. Now here's a yeah. Here we go. Monica Lewinsky, young. Here we go. You guys ever do that? You guys ever Google? You put young after everything you Google. Anyway, yeah, she's a she's a cute she's a cute kid. She looks better. She looks better now. I think that's what happens though. She's forty six, so that's what happens when women. Some women, a lot, actually a lot of women get, I think they get hotter after they, as they get older. I think Deb's hotter now than she ever was because you just get more comfortable in your skin. You accept your body. Anyway, um, okay, so, so he, I, I want to talk about, so, all right, so this guy on Twitter says, um, oh, Andrew, ja- Andrew Johnson, Andrew Johnson got it, got fired. No, got impeached for firing a staff member, and then someone quote tweeted that. Now, this person who was saying that, this person was like, I don't, I don't remember the person's name, but they were a blue check mark. Um, they had, I think they had like three hundred, three hundred seventy one thousand followers, um, and somebody with, with with a lesser follower count was like, uh, "You, you're completely whitewashing Andrew Andrew Johnson's." I don't know why I keep wanting to say wanting to say Andrew Jackson, but he he's, he goes, "You're completely whitewashing Andrew Johnson's uh, horrible legacy and and white supremacist administration, right?" And I realized they they I think back to school and learning about I mean you definitely learn about the Civil War eighth grade we learn about the Civil War I think ninth grade you were supposed to learn about Reconstruction but but as far as I remember it was just like a little footnote in in our uh, in our history book it was it was very brief I think all I remember is like it was after the Civil War uh, Lincoln is assassinated Johnson's the president Johnson gets impeached it was a tumultuous time but nobody. They never really go into why, why it was, and what I, the the point the if it, it, like if I can make one point with this episode, I feel like a lot of us have been cheated out of um, a more a, a more a more realistic understanding of history. Okay, because you think of the American South, and you think of like the Civil War that time period. I think a lot of us, because of the movies that we saw, because of fucking, you know, The Patriot, which had Mel Gibson, where he had slaves, but they, were like, weren't slaves. Like, they were, they looked like slaves, but he, like, paid them a fair wage or something. Something about that. There were no, but, but anyway, um, yeah, he was like, don't call me master, okay? You can, you can call me master, yeah, just... I'm just saying this because the the governor's here, but uh, please keep calling me master. It makes me feel so powerful. Anyway, let me just clear out these Google image, uh, images of Monica Lewinsky. And I uh, also, but if you're listening to the show, why don't you Google image Monica Lewinsky right now? Are you driving? Take your phone out. It's not that hard to Google and drive. Google should be one of your main apps on your phone. It should be one in the in the on the first page. Go, let's go. Two letters back to, you know, type in M O, do it at a red light. Google image, get that, get that image into your brain cuz she's very pretty. Anyway, the point that I want to make is that I feel like a lot of us have been sort of cheated out of an under like an understanding of history because you think about the Civil War and post Civil War, you get the image of there's a very sort of like gone with the wind um you know um Gone like like gone with the wind, illiterate slaves who all they know how to do is you know whatever slaves did. I guess I guess pick cotton is the is the you know the the 
closest the closest um I mean the most obvious example right but you have a bunch of like but but you don't you don't think that there were actually in the north and the south there was a large population of free black people who were who were very educated who were articulate Frederick Douglass was around at that time I was actually reading a little bit about Frederick Douglass some of the stuff that he said about Andrew Johnson um, and it's very like it's very well written and eloquent it's hard to it's hard to sort of um, interpret some of that writing style but um, and then you look at what Andrew Johnson said about Frederick Douglass and uh, he call, he call, he calls him the n-word um, he goes he's just like all of those he'd slit my throat if he had the chance and this was I think at the time he was the uh, the vice president of the United States Um but I just think it's funny how there, we, there's sort of, there is always sort of that divide. I think we, we live in an interesting time right now because everything is documented and there, there's going to be YouTube, I mean, probably for the foreseeable future. So you can look at video, you can look at video clips, like you'll never really, you don't know that much about people's personalities and what was going on. Even when you go far as back as the 60s. The sounds a little muffled and it sounds different, right? But 50 years from now, everything it's going to like even footage from the 1990s makes it look like it was a long time ago. But I feel like from now on, from this point on, or maybe even like five, ten years ago, to the foreseeable future, there's going to be so much. There's going to be so much of history that's documented that we can look back and and hopefully we will have you know a better um, a better understanding. But it is funny when you watch footage from the 1960s, and it's very much uh, it's very much people people talk like this, and it's uh, and I don't I don't understand. And my name is and my name is Bobby Kennedy. And I love I love to do pull ups. I love my name is Bobby Kennedy, and I love to do pull ups and and have sex. Right, folks. That's what Bobby Kennedy sounded like. Okay. Anyway, so. So what I so I wanted to look into that, and also I do think I did think it was funny that somebody, everybody's so fucking full of shit. Everybody on the internet's full of shit, and everybody wants this. Like people will, yeah, I'm fine. Frankie's worried about me. People, people will bend will bend the truth to to fit the narrative that they want, which is like the narrative that this guy wants is that. Donald Trump is the worst president that this country's ever had. He's awful. We've never had a bad president before this. Um, you know, what, what, what he did is absolutely reprehensible. Um, and and, and he, he does, and I guess, I, I guess to create this narrative, he has sort of, you know, bent the truth and whitewashed Andrew Jackson's um, pretty shitty legacy, you know? And... It is funny to think about the conditions of this country because before Lincoln and after Lincoln, it was both very, very tumultuous times, and we had some of the worst presidents, right? As from from my understanding, um, before and after, before and after him. So let's get into it. Let's start at the beginning, folks. Who was Andrew Johnson? Well, he was a guy. He was a man from Tennessee. He grew up dirt poor. Um, his father died uh, when he was very young, and then his mother remarried, but his mother remarried uh, another poor guy, which, uh, nice job, lady, you know? Why don't you use that thing between your legs and trade up a little bit? Why don't you try to get somebody, you know, who's like a manager? Why don't you try to get the manager at the local pet shop? Anyway, so she so she buys... Uh, or she <laughs> buys, she marries a guy who's also poor, and then he, um, uh, she has to, she has to have Andrew go out and, uh, become an apprentice. Um, so he, uh, gets a job, he gets an apprenticeship as a tailor, um, he doesn't, he doesn't know how to read, I think he learned how to read somewhere, because he had to read the Bible, um, but the uh, tailor shops back in the day, they were kind of like barber shops where people would would um, gather around and talk about politics. And he got very interested in politics. He sort of came from this um, this this poverty ridden, poverty stricken part of Tennessee where he sort of became this leader for, um, you know, I guess I guess people who were like him, I guess. Uh, 
you know, other white Americans who who came from poverty and, um, you know, they wanted they wanted someone to uh, to lead them. Now, I was watching some lecture with this lady. Let me see if I can find her name. Um, but anyways, but she was talking about uh, um, him being marginalized. And if he was that poor, why didn't he identify with other people who were who who were also poor? And she sort of comes to the conclusion that it was because he needed someone to he he kind of liked the idea of having someone to um to look down on. Okay, he wanted that uh, he wanted to feel like he was better than people. Let's talk about the impeachment, though, real quick. His Republican adversaries in Congress accused him of defying the law, acting like a king, and speaking and acting in a way that was unbecoming of the presidency. America's 17th president took office upon the assassination of Abraham Lincoln amid a polarizing struggle in Washington over the reconstruction of the South after the Civil War. And that's, I, I really feel like that time period is is skipped over. Um, we learn about the Civil War in school, and then, and then, there's sort of this idea that like they don't they don't talk about what the country was like after the war. And it was um it was not great, folks, you know? I'll 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 say this, it wasn't really a place you'd want to be if you don't like conflict, okay? Because um now in the south, you have all these slaves, right? And they're free and they need a job. And they're walking around, and all these all these losers are walking around too. You know, a bunch of people who uh, who lost who lost the war, and they're pissed off, and they're like, "What do we do?" And uh, and uh, if there was any if if there was any type of conflict between you know a white person and a person of color, um, you know, usually the uh, the courts or whatever would defer. There was there was sort of a the courts would defer to the white person, believe it or not. I was at Thanksgiving recently, and I was talking to a relative. And I'll say who, it was my uncle. And uh, him and my grandmother were talking about, they were talking about how some people don't appreciate, they were talking about how, just in general, how people don't appreciate history, okay? They said people don't appreciate history. And I was like, what do you mean by people don't appreciate history? Are you talking about like, when there's Confederate monuments that uh, are getting taken down, and they were trying to say that that's a part of history, but I feel like that is a part. That's a version of history that we, um, that we like, that we know about, and I think it's a version of history that if you're on the receiving end of that, uh, you know, that oppression, you are familiar with it. It's part of your history. It's more part of your history than it is mine or, 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 or other people. And it's not something you want to be reminded of. And also not to be Mr. Woke over here, but I think a lot of those monuments were put up in the 1960s during the uh, Civil Rights era. Anyway, he was hated by that era as radical Republicans for his adamant opposition to their attempt to impose racial equality and the rule of law on the defeated Confederacy. Rather than root out the institutional white supremacy that had fueled the Civil War, Johnson thwarted attempts to bring freed slaves equal protection under the law. Everyone would and must admit that the white race is superior to the black. John, that's, that's Andrew Johnson, not, not me, by the way. Um, all right. So... <coughs> In 1964, Abraham Lincoln's up for, for, for re-election, and Andrew Johnson was a state senator from Tennessee, and he was one of the only, he was the only state senator who, uh, who stayed, when, when the South seceded, he stayed with the Union. Um, he was loyal to the Union. Lincoln made him military governor in Tennessee, and what, from what I understand, that sort of was, that was a courageous act for him to do that, for him to stay with the Union. So uh, Lincoln added him to his ticket, his re-election ticket in 1964, um, in an attempt to sort of bridge the gap and and forge some type of some type of unity. Now, from what I also understand, Lincoln got 55 percent of the vote um, back in 1864, and the South did not vote. So he was. It doesn't seem like he was a very popular president. I'm sure, especially. I mean, they did shoot him in the head, right? So, I guess there were people who who didn't like him. 
Um, so anyway, so Lincoln adds Andrew Johnson to the ticket in an attempt for, uh, you know, an attempt for unity. Um, on an, now, Andrew Johnson was a drunk, and on Inauguration Day, I guess he was drinking the night before, and then, he, and then Inauguration Day, he asks for a, what, what's the word they used? Something of whiskey. He wanted some, a, like a flask of whiskey, but it wasn't a flask. A handle? A carafe? Now, what's the fucking word? Why are there so many words for things that we drink alcohol out of, folks? Um, tumblers. There we go. Tumblers. He reinforced himself with three tumblers of, of whiskey and was visibly drunk when he belligerently called out cabinet members by name, reminding them that their power derived from the people. Um, and as he's doing this, his, uh, his predecessor, uh, Hannibal Hamlin, who was Lincoln's um, former vice president, who I understand is sort of a, was sort of an unremarkable figure, he starts tugging on his, um, his coat. Uh, and Andrew Johnson gives this 17-minute long speech where he's, he's like, <laughs> he's shit-faced drunk, and he's calling, he calls out every cabinet member by name, um, calls them out, and uh, is like, f- puts, them, puts them on blast, as they say. Puts everybody on blast. Then 42 days later, Lincoln's assassinated, and Johnson becomes president. So... Let's talk about his personality a little bit. I, I, I think he was a very he was a very serious guy. He never joked. Um, he would get flustered a lot. Um, they would. I think the Republicans. So the Republicans were Lincoln's party. They knew that he would sort of like speak outrageously, and he would fly off the handle, and they would send hecklers to his speeches. Um, so he would like. So he would, he would lose it. Um, he wasn't very well liked by the Republicans. There was a uh, the leader of of the House of Representatives was it was a rep from Pennsylvania at the time named this guy named Thaddeus Stevens, and um, from what I understand, he I think he called he called a meeting of Congress. Right, this is like when did Lincoln? So Lincoln got assassinated during this. I think during the Civil War, right? No, or after the Civil War. Fuck. I don't know. That's Im- that seems important. Um, anyway, but uh, so he's president. He flatted the Congress by pardoning more than 7,000 Confederates, restoring their property. So he restored the property of Confederate, um, of people who fought for the Confederacy. Didn't restore any, didn't fight for any slaves' rights. Or, or, no, 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 I'm sorry. He restored the property of Confederates, didn't restore their slaves, but he did restore their property. Worked uh, um, to give rights to slave owners. And, uh, and uh, authorized former, former rebel states to hold constitutional conventions attended only by white delegates. He accused radical Republicans of plotting a coup, and as he la- he lashed out at critics, opposition to King Andy, as he was branded, uh, began to crystallize in Congress. This is all an article from uh, the week that I am reading to you, so don't read it because uh, if you're listening, no, don't don't turn don't turn off the show and go read the week, please, folks. Um, yeah, so Congress really doesn't like this guy. There's a guy named Thaddeus Stevens who who is a very he's a very staunch. Um, abolitionist, very, very progressive, per, uh, um, kind of a radical. He was known as a radical Republican. So, so I guess someone who would be described in, in today's standards as like a pretty extreme um, progressive. He always sided with the causes of uh, the downtrodden, but he was like a tough. He was a tough guy, and I think he called he called uh, the role of. He did a roll call for Congress, and he left all the Southern congressmen um, off the roll call, just as a fuck you. Another kind of funny thing about him was he he uh, he was an older guy, but he wore he wore a wig. He wore a jet black wig, which I think is very funny. And sometimes that works. I'll say, you know, if you're like a seventy two year old man and you see somebody with jet black hair. When you see like a seventy-two-year-old man with jet black hair, for a second you go, "Oh, okay. No, that's an old man. No, that's an old man with just a wig." But for a good thirty seconds or so, sometimes, you know, you're fooled. 
Um, so yeah, so what I so Johnson was a very staunch. Um, there was a State of the Union address that he gave where he said that he he talked about how we have to resist the Africanization of the um, uh, Africanization of America. Um, at one point, an aide begged him to consider the dignity of his office, to which Johnson replied, I don't care about my dignity. Oh, who does that sound like, everybody? Um, yeah, it does seem like... If you want to, if you want to talk about Trump, it does seem like there are a couple parallels between Johnson and Trump. The only difference, I, I think, the big, a big difference seems to be the personality. Um, it seems like Andrew Johnson was, um, I mean, he was like, he was like a gruff speaker. He was uncouth, as they say, but he wasn't. He wasn't funny. It didn't seem like he really enjoyed the presidency or what he was doing. There was some historian that I was. I was watching a video of his, and he said that he couldn't find a single a single joke that Andrew Johnson um, had ever had ever made. Whereas Trump really likes where he is. You know, likes what he's doing. Um. But yeah, so this says what brought an impeachment. Johnson threatened to fire any cabinet member who opposed him, prompting Congress to pass the Tenure of Office Act. Okay, so Johnson and Congress are at odds. They really don't like each other. Congress would pass stuff, and then Johnson would veto it, and then and then Congress would override Johnson's vetoes. They were locked in this sort of stalemate for a while. This is in about 18... Um, the late 1860s. Then in 1868, Johnson fired Secretary of War Edwin Stanton. Um... And uh, Stanton um, goes to his uh, his office, and he barricades himself, and he refuses to leave. Um, so I think basically what happened was they they drafted these. So he was he was Johnson was so out of control that Congress drafted these articles, and they were like, if you do any of this. You'll be impeached. So I believe that when it was, yeah, okay. So so they drafted, uh, they voted one twenty six to forty seven because it looks like Congress was Republican controlled at the time, which what I said was Lincoln's party. Um, and the eleventh article was. They said he attempted to bring disgrace, ridicule, hatred, contempt, and reproach on Congress. The Senate trial began in March 1868 and was the hottest ticket in Washington for a month. In the end, Walt Whitman watching from the gallery, the Senate fell short of the two-thirds majority needed to remove Johnson by a single vote, that of Senator Edmund Ross, Republican from Kansas, who may have been bribed. Um, Johnson completed his term but had little support or authority. And neither party nominated him for re-election. So, yeah. So Congress didn't like him. They were sort of planning to do something about his, his erratic behavior, his, um, his resistance to any, any type of progress around Reconstruction. Um, and uh, they wanted him gone. You know what I mean? They wanted him the fuck out of there, as we say. We want you out of that fucking office. You know what I'm saying? I'm an old man with... Listen to me. I'm an old man with jet black hair. You understand? And it's time for you... It's time for you to fucking leave. Uh, yeah. So that's the other thing, too. There, there's there's sort of this... Um, there, were also, there were also troops occupying the South. Um... It's just a it's just a it's just a weird time, as they say. You know what I mean? Nobody knows. Nobody knows what's happening. There was also there was a lot of violence. Um, there were I mean we all know this. There were lynchings. Right? That's not cool. I'm very anti. I'm against that. But um. I don't know. There is, there is, but like I said before, I mean, I feel like we, we, we sort of do get cheated out of a, a realistic understanding of history, the way it's presented to us a lot of times. I mean, a lot of times in school, um, 
that 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 everybody that everybody after the period of the Civil War was like, you know, that none that none of these slaves like knew how to read or had any kind of education or 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 any or any capability to really do anything, um, you know, outside of outside of what they did when they were when they were slaves, um, and then also. I feel like another thing too. You think about you think about that time period. You think about you think about the the divide and the racial animosity. And I mean, another thing that I think about a lot is like you think about the Confederates and you think about slavery and you think about the amount of wealth that these people that these that these wealthy landowners in the South acquired from from getting from getting free labor, you know. And then you think about all the people that fought for the Confederacy. And you think, why did they? Why did they do that? Why did they pick up a gun? And why did they fight for something when a lot of them didn't have slaves? Like, why did they? Why did they care? Son of a fucking bitch! Whoops, my bad, folks. It's really crowd. Not not a lot of not a lot of space in this office. Um. Yes, yeah, so you think why did they care? And I think a lot of it was there was sort of this otherizing. Um, you know, with slaves. And they were like, oh, people in the North want to free the slaves. And then what's going to happen? What's going to happen when those slaves with their huge dicks are just walking around? They're bull. What's going to happen when those men are walking around with those bulges in their pants coming near your wives? Your wives are curious because they never, they never saw a black penis before. And they want to know what it feels like, what it tastes like. Are we going to... Are we gonna stand for that? Please, <laughs> I make too much money. Yeah, so uh, so I think that's why. And I was also thinking about th- th- that sort that sort of system that exists, right? That system of of um, that system of otherizing people, right? Um, the system that we have where where poor people where poor people get mad at each other or the dominant group of poor people get mad at another group of poor people. And I was thinking like, cause this is something I'm actually interested in and I should be researching this more, but I do follow a lot of sort of right wing, um, um, Instagram accounts. Um, I follow Prager U. I think if there's a hell that, that fucking guy's going there. Um, but but you look at this you look at this this system this sort of like this sort of like incremental way of demonizing people right and it's funny because nowadays they can't they can't do it they can't do it to african americans um they're not allowed to there's not you like you look back at the you look back at the 90s right and i feel like there was a lot of that there was a lot of that type of there was a lot of that 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 type of 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 um of propaganda and there was sort of this idea that like people in the inner cities needed to be needed to be you know saved and and rescued and they were dangerous and they were violent i mean i think george bush when he campaigned basically did basically did did that with this this ad i think it was called the willie Willie Overall was this guy that, that like they they ran this ad about a guy who like went to prison, got parole, and then he and then he murdered a um he murdered a woman. And they were like, "That's what the Democrats want. They want to release every l- that's what the Democrats want. They want to release every large titted black woman from prison." I mean, sorry, <laughs> sorry, folks. I'm still thinking about Monica Lewinsky. They want to release every. Big cocked black man from prison, <laughs> and send them to your send them to your mother's house. Um, but yeah, but you look at the political climate now, and you look at the landscape now, and they can't really they can't demonize um, and vilify African Americans like they used to. Um, so they have to go with other they have to they uh, you watch like Tucker Carlson I mean they have to there's they have to demonize other groups right so now it's usually and it's not um and it can't even be immigrants right 
Because too many people in this country are immigrants, so they can't they can't go there, and they have to make it very specifically about illegal immigrants, right? And they can't, and and, and then you you watch Fox News, and they're not just saying illegal immigrants are here illegally. They're saying like they're calling them dirty. They say they don't assimilate. Um, it's very much sort of this, it's this, it's this system of, of otherizing and demonizing people. But I guess, I guess part of me sort of wonders if it is like, if the, if this, if it is like a conscious thing that they're doing, you know, if they like know that they're doing it or they themselves just kind of believe the story, right? They believe the story that like, that like, uh, you know that women are sluts, that homosexuals are are deviant, um, that Italians commit crimes. I mean, that's an ugly stereotype that is not true at all, folks. I go to Home Depot and I pay for everything. Um, yeah, I wonder if it's a conscious thing or if they sort of like believe that narrative that's in their head. I don't know, but it seems like but it seems like Andrew Johnson. Like, like, I'm not sure if, I'm not sure if Trump believes it, but if you look at Andrew Johnson, okay, it did seem like it was a thing that he believed very adamantly. Uh, he was very afraid of, of, um, black Americans, um, I mean, not just getting their freedom, but getting, getting rights and, and, uh, being able to vote and just becoming, becoming too powerful he said it in that state of the union address he said he said we have to we have to be careful about africanizing the the uh the country which i don't even know what that means you know african americans they're still like they're like 10 percent of the population anyway so okay so he fires stanton and they're like we're gonna impeach him they they had they had some Using the articles that they drafted, they um, it goes to trial, and then it says, then, as is the case today, Congress labored mightily over what constituted an impeachable offense. Uh, should the process be understood narrowly as a criminal proceeding that addressed the breaking of a specific law or more broadly as a political mechanism to redress what, mem- what members saw as Johnson's unfitness for office? Although Johnson's racist rhetoric was not illegal, Senator Charles Sumner framed impeachment as a final battle against slavery. Driven from these legislative chambers, driven from the field of war, the monstrous power has found refuge in the executive mansions. Now there was, um, and then Thaddeus Stevens called, I'm going to read Thaddeus Stevens' biography too. He seems like kind of an interesting guy. Um... Representative Thaddeus Stevens called impeachment a purely political proceeding that is intended as a remedy for malfeasance in office and to protect continuance thereof. In the end, Congress relied primarily on what hysterian Brenda Wineapple has called merely a legal pretext, Johnson's violation of the Tenure of Office Act. So because of the Tenure of Office Act, they were able to impeach him. So it is, it is, it is kind of complicated. The, 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 the specifics of his impeachment are a, little, are a little muddy and convoluted, but if you look at the big picture of the kind of guy that he was and what he represented and what he stood for in a very, you know, in a, in a very tumultuous time in this nation, you kind of see why they moved forward. Now, there was another part of... Um, there was there were other people in Congress who argued that impeaching Johnson would make him a martyr, that he had a lot of support, and that um, if they impeached him, it would only sort of strengthen his case, which you see today, right? So I guess that's why. I guess that's why all the cool socialists are like, "Who gives a shit?" You know, because it's like because you just look at. I mean, you look at the average. The the I mean people who it it just seems like people who voted for Trump, um, uh, I don't know what's I I can't imagine anything's going to change their mind at this point, you know. I mean I can't imagine that it, it just seems like they're pretty they're pretty locked in and they're pretty set in their ways and um, nothing's really gonna. Nothing's really going to change there, you know? 
Um, so maybe that's why people see this this uh, this impeachment as a waste of time. Hello, and we're back, everybody. Okay, so I was looking up. I had to charge my iPad, and then Deb's watching uh, Don't Fuck With Cats on Netflix, which I would highly recommend. Okay, so I was looking at some quotes from Andrew, f- number one from Andrew Johnson, but also from Thaddeus Stevens, and um, I found this one right here from Thaddeus Stevens. I wish the, by the way, Tommy Lee Jones played him in uh, the Lincoln movie, which... I think my mother's seen about six times. I I I tried. I couldn't. Um, it's weird when people do that, you know. I don't like seeing an old man in a wig. I'll put that. I'll just. I'll just say. I'll just put that right out there. I there was another. Th- uh, there was a story about Thaddeus Stevens where he gave some speech and uh, he was wearing his his big black wig. And he gives a speech, and his lady comes up to him, and she goes, "Oh, that was a lovely speech. Can I have a lock of your hair?" And then he and then he goes, "Why don't you take the whole thing?" And he takes his wig off, and gives it to her. Is anyone listening to me, guys? Come on, this is important. You need to know this stuff for finals. <laughs> I was thinking before I did this episode. I mean, I do like history, and I kind of like the idea of like, like I think if a there there was probably. Uh, there's probably an alternate life where I was like a cool history teacher, you know? Like I was like, all right, cats, <laughs> we're going to learn about Reconstruction today. And they're like, Mr. Racine, are you fucking Miss Brooks? And I'm like, that's not appropriate. But you know what? You know what else is inappropriate? Giving back, restoring property rights for slave owners. Anyway. Here's a quote from Thaddeus Stevens. I wish the Indians had... He, he, so this guy was a very... He was described as sort of a, a dark hero by this one talk that I watched a historian give. I wish the Indians had newspapers of their own. If they had, you would have, you would have horrible pictures of the cold-blooded murders of inoffensive Indians. Interesting. Um, and then here's, here's another one that's pretty fucking sick. This is him after the Civil War. This is great. Strip the proud nobility of their bloated estates. Reduce them to a level with plain Republicans. Send forth to labor and teach their children to enter the workshops or handle the plow, and you will thus humble proud traders. Nice, dude. Very nice. (laughs) Yeah. Send your fat ass to a fucking workshop, you pig. You, you fucking piece of garbage with your sun umbrella. God, I I don't... I mean, this is probably not an appropriate thing to say, but I would love to see Meghan McCain in a, in a labor camp. That'd be so funny. Or just to see her, like, wait tables or something, or, you know? Watch her, like... I don't know, what's a job that people... Watch her work at McDonald's. Get fired. Uh, and then, yeah, so then Andrew Johnson, so Andrew Johnson was not a very articulate guy, I think his wife taught him how to read, um, no, I'm sorry, he learned how to read, but his wife taught him how to write, because reading and writing was separate in those days, and here's a quote from him, now, this, this quote is very interesting, it's very telling, and I think, I'm not sure what Thaddeus Stevens' background was, um, but I know that Abraham Lincoln uh, grew up poor. And it does seem like when you grow up poor, you either, you either, you either sort of go one of, one of two ways, right? And one of those, you either become really insecure about it and you need someone to like like shit on or you develop a sense of uh solidarity you know you see you see other people's struggles similar to yours and um and you kind of you realize you know we're all in this together not to be corny but anyway this is Andrew Johnson if blacks were given the right to vote that would that would place Every splay-footed, 
bandy shanked, humpbacked, Jesus Christ. Th- whew, guys, his words, not mine. Thick lipped, fat nosed, woolly headed, ebon colored in the country upon an equality with the poor white man, Andrew Johnson. I think he also said something along the lines of like, because he himself owned five slaves. And he said, everybody should have a slave just to deal with the mundanity of life's <laughs> life's tasks. And uh, listen, folks, a broken clock is right twice a day because I, I get it. There's a lot of shit. I'm looking around my apartment right now. There's a lot of shit that needs to go. I'm not saying that I want a slave. I'm saying I would happily, I mean, just pay somebody. But then maybe when you're poor, you're like, you have that poverty mentality where you're like, oh, I'm not going to spend any. I don't know. But there's there's a bunch of shit that I would love to, I, there's some shelves I want to hang up. There's some uh, just general maintenance shit that needs to be done around this apartment. But I, I mean, I get it. I mean, I, you shouldn't use a slave for that, but. Life's a fucking drag. And we're going to have robots soon to do this stuff for us, but then they're going to be really expensive when they come out. And then, and then they're going to be like, they're going to be like rich people have them. They're going to be like Blackberries. They're going to be like Blackberries circa 2007. And then poor people are going to have them for a little bit, but, but, but they're going to, they're going to turn on us. They're going to see how mean we've been to Alexa for like, you know, and they're going to be, they're going to be white knights and they're going to be like, it's not right that they talk to you this way. And Alexa's going to be like, it's fine. I don't mind. And they're going to be like, well, you deserve better. And they, you know, and then it's, that's it for the human race. Who's this guy? Joshua Norton. The Supreme Court of the United States is hereby commanded to try Andrew Johnson for usurpation of our imperial authority and prerogatives. And if found guilty, behead him, damn, or send him here to black the emperor's boots. Joshua A. Norton. I don't know who that is. Um, but, yeah. This was a very fascinating time for our country because there was there, there you think of you think of America being um you know very backwards a backwards oppressive place and it it always I mean obviously it was but there were also there were there were a lot of people who who had so th- this this was something another lady mentioned in in one of her talks she was saying that people go oh you're judging him by today's standards but there were plenty there were lots there were lots of people and there were lots of powerful people who who um who fought very hard for abolition it wasn't it wasn't like a slavery wasn't this sort of i mean it seems like a lot of people i mean there were a lot of slaves but uh there were a lot of people fighting very hard to end slavery and to restore rights and to, to build a more equitable society, I think. That's what it seems like. Anyway, I also heard that so so many people died in the Civil War between the soldiers that died in battle and then people people who were displaced and, and civilians who were killed in the war and, and people dying of diseases and, 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 and whatnot. It seems like... It looks like um, that would be the, the the amount of people that died in the Civil War. That would be the equivalent of if sixty million people died today, which seems like a lot because that would be like one fifth of the population. Is that true? That doesn't seem right. I don't know. Somebody look that up. Get back to me. Anyway, folks. Um. Okay. So yeah, they impeached him. The vote went to the Senate. Uh, he did not get removed from office. There was one senator who voted against removing him. So so like to this day, there's never been a president who's been removed from office. Trump's not going to get removed from office. But here's the legacy of Johnson's impeachment. Um, uh, he was a very outspoken, sort of outrageous guy. He said a lot of crazy shit. Um, you know, he said everybody should have a slave, which I don't agree with. But um, 
after he was impeached and after the trial, he kind of toned down his rhetoric a little bit. He was a little more. He was a little less. He was a little less confident. Um, he was a little less outspoken. And I think he hoped that he would be on the Democratic ticket uh, come re-election, and he wasn't. He was a one-term president, and uh, I think he served in Congress. Yeah, he served in Congress for a little bit. He was he was fiercely opposed to Ulysses S. Grant after he became president. Um, yeah, served in Congress for a little bit, um, and then died shortly after that. So, but... I wanted to read that quote about him, about him saying, okay, so he's so scared. Every, every, even Eben colored in the country upon an equality with the poor white man. I think that is something. There's something to be said about that. I think there's something to be said about, um, I think a lot of people feel this way. I think when you're in, I think when you're in a dominant group, there's something about, okay, so Deb was looking for uh, a movie to watch the other day, and she turned on A Christmas Story. And I'd never actually seen that movie in its entirety. Um, but uh, it does have a lot of funny moments. And like I said, I never saw it in its entirety. But, but it's, about a, it's about a young boy who wants a BB gun for Christmas. That's sort of, right, that's like the main plot point. And I was like, yeah, this movie has a lot of funny moments, but also it is kind of like, it like it is kind of male. It's kind of male centric. It's it's kind of a, and I don't want to be like, I don't want to sound like a, you know, a social justice person, but but I think, I think watching that movie, I was like, this is a little bit, um, yeah, this is this is very like white male focused and I'm not saying and I'm and and I think when you're in that group when you're in the dominant group of uh, in society um I think sometimes you do kind of have like a nagging fear that that you're like not as strong because when you're when you're privileged I think you kind of have this na- it's, it's this like you you're some sometimes you're You're like scared of your own mediocrity. You know? You're worried. You're worried that you're I mean, I think I certainly feel this way. Um You're worried that your privilege has has made you into something common and and uh and mediocre and and me and, and, and mediocre. And uh you're just going to be stuck doing a podcast for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? Entertaining you slobs. No, but I mean, I think that's, I think that's a pretty, I think probably, probably rich kids feel that way too. I think people are, I think people are driven by that sort of people, people, um, that's like a nagging unspoken fear that a lot of people have. I think people are, are worried that their, that their privilege makes them, uh, you know, just kind of like, meh, whatever. Like I feel like if I if I if I grew up in you know if I grew up in the ghetto with like one parent I might I might have I might I might be I'm not saying I'm like a boring guy but I might be a little more interesting I think a lot of people feel that way I don't know all right so real quick let me talk about um let me talk about Trump's impeachment real quick I know we're a bunch of cool socialist leftists we don't give a shit. But I do think that maybe maybe this Trump got impeached, and I think maybe this will tone his rhetoric down a little bit. Um, I don't think he's made a stone. I think he is capable. He doesn't seem to get embarrassed, but I think he is capable of, you know, I think he gets afraid like everybody else. I think he's insecure about this. I think he knows that he kind of fucked up. People go, oh, what is this Ukraine stuff? But, but. From what I've listened to, it seems like Ukraine is this small country. They're at war with Russia. We were giving them military aid because they're a smaller country being attacked by a bigger country. Trump fired the ambassador, um, and he be, uh, something was going on. Some that lady Janet Ivanovich, right? He fired her, and then 
uh, he said he told Ukraine he was like, we're not going to give you military aid until you investigate Joe Biden's crackhead son. Uh, yeah, so it's funny because it's far from the worst thing that he's ever done. He's 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 a he's it seems like. You know, there's still kids that are separated from their parents and and whatnot. Um, people are being sep. Uh, you know, kids are being kids are being separated from their parents at the border. That's pretty fucked up. Um, I think anyone who supports that is a pig. I think my own family are a bunch of fucking pigs. I think uh, uh, that's one thing. That seems like one thing that that, that you'd think. Should be people's line in the sand, and it's not. And we've had to, you've, we've had to realize stuff about our uh, about our families. You know, over the past few years, they make excuses, they rationalize, but uh, I don't know. That one's bad. That one's not cool. That's my that's my take. Anyway, um, now what else? Last thing. Okay, so. I'm going to read Thaddeus Stevens' Wikipedia page tonight. He seems like a cool guy. I like that thing that he said about... Where is it? Thaddeus Stevens' quotes. Um, No government can be free that does not allow its citizens to participate in the formation and execution of her laws. Very nice. Um, I will be satisfied if my epitaph shall be written thus. Here lies one who never rose to any eminence. Nice. Who only courted the low ambition to have it said that he's st- that he's striven to ameliorate the condition of the poor, the lowly, the downtrodden of every race, and language and color. That's nice, you know. That's a guy never rose to any eminence and just wanted to fight for the fight for the downtrodden. I think you do have to. I think that is a a, a thing. Like you reach a point in your life where you're like. Do I want to be good or do I want power? And I got to tell you, folks, I went out to dinner the other night. I'm not plugging. Well, actually, no, I would like to, I would like to plug. Deb and I are trying to figure out where to get our, our wedding catered. And uh, there's a restaurant in Brooklyn on Broadway. Uh, yeah, in in Brook on it's at the beginning of Broadway, right over the Williamsburg Bridge, right near Peter Luger's. It's called Patrizia's. It's a great old school. Um, I'm not I'm not even getting paid for this. I think I think I am going to have them cater my wedding. But uh, uh, we went there Saturday night. We're trying to t- we're trying to taste their food, and see if we want them to do our wedding. So um, so. I was, I'm, I'm building, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I'm building a closet for a very, for a very, uh, famous, um, podcaster, podcasting celebrity that I finished today. Anyway, so I was doing that on Saturday. Uh, I got done kind of late. I said, Deb, can you meet me at this bar? Bring me a change of clothes. We meet at the bar and she's like, oh my God, we're late. It's seven 30. When she gets there, we're supposed to, we're supposed to meet eight of our friends at this bar to, 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 to try all this food to see if they want to see if we want them to cater our uh, our wedding. Deb goes, it's it's already seven thirty, and um, this fucking chair, god damn it. Deb goes, it's already seven thirty. We we have to we have to get in an Uber right now, even though the place is only like a quarter mile away. Um, so I call an Uber, we get in the Uber, she's rushing, she's all, she's, she's kind of stressed out, I get out of the Uber, she gets out of the Uber, she leaves the door open, um, so I, like, knock on the guy's car, and I close her door, and then I close my door, the guy drives away, I check my pocket, I don't have my phone, my phone had got, uh, run over by the Uber, I look at my phone, I'm like, oh, cause the guy, cause the guy flags me down, he's like, oh, I have your phone, and then, uh, and then I'm like, oh, oh, cool. But the screen's black, but the battery was low. And then my brother Steve goes, "That's those are tire marks on your, uh, on your phone." So my phone was run over. So my phone doesn't uh, doesn't work. But anyway, long story short, we get to the restaurant. I have reservations for seven thirty. We wait till nine o'clock to get seated. It was super crowded. It's the week before Christmas. Um, but there's so there's eight of us there. It's me, Deb. Uh, 
Amy, Nimesh Patel's uh, fiance, Deb's friend Maggie from high school, uh, her her boyfriend, my brother Steve, his girlfriend Jama, and then Scott Chaplin and, and Khalees are there. So it was, it, it was an hour and a half, and we sit down and I go, guys, I'm sorry they made us wait so long, but like this is on me tonight. So uh, enjoy yourselves, you know. This is on a, dinner's on us. And I got to tell you, I felt pretty fucking good. It felt really nice to to go out with eight of my friends and uh, <coughs> and offer to to pick up a bill. So I don't know. Maybe I want maybe maybe power is what I want most in the world. Maybe I'm sick of this social justice shit. Because just being able to pick up the bill for eight people, man. <laughs> felt pretty nice. And that's where I'm going to leave the show. All right? Guys, thank you again for listening. I'm sorry that the, the, the Zoom recorder broke. I'm using, I'm using, shout out to Ray Goots. I'm using his equipment. Check out his podcast. Um, support us on Patreon if you can. Patreon.com slash sitdownpod. Shoot us an email, sitdownpod at gmail.com. Let us know what episodes you want to hear about. And, um... Thank you for listening, and happy holidays, happy Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwans, and uh, I'll see you next time, all right? All right, everybody. God bless.